Hello, friends, and welcome. I wanted to get right to your questions about how to have a healthy brain. There are some cutting edge and thrilling new developments in the brain sciences that offer an enormous amount of hope and excitement for uh, any number of brain disorders, things from depression and anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, attention deficit, autism, um, even substance abuse issues that, uh, again, this new breakthroughs in brain sciences offer some wonderful insights and opportunities. So let's get right to it. I wanted to show you this before and after picture of an individual who was depressed and then had one of the treatments we're going to talk about, TMS, and um, with a dramatic outcome. The picture on the left shows this person while they were depressed. And notice how dark most of the picture is. The dark areas of their brain, that's what this is a picture of, their, a cross section of their brain. The dark sections are areas of the brain that are pretty much offline. They're not working. It's like the person is unconscious almost in most of their brain. The parts of the brain that are active are areas associated with negative thoughts, depressive feelings, hopeless feelings that just keep playing over and over again. After a series of TMS treatments, look how that person's brain opened up. All of those bright areas indicate those areas of the brain are active now. The person has access to all kinds of potentialities and, and um, skills that they didn't have access to before. They, have, they can see opportunities where they didn't see them before. Their emotions are much more flexible and even joyful as a result. So. These new developments in the brain science uh, are giving us opportunities to help what had previously been thought of as the worst possible treatment-resistant cases. And all of this translates into a new hope that really wasn't even possible a few years ago. What we want to do in this video series is I want you to have more information about how to keep your brain healthy than even your doctor might have access to. You may wind up knowing more than your psychiatrist about how the brain works and how to keep it healthy by the end of this um, video series. So let's start with this slide here, which talks about one of the principal ideas of this work. And that's the idea that the brain operates through neural networks. That's another way of saying nerve connections. Every thought that you have, every feeling that you feel, every act or behavior that you enact has a wiring that it uses to do that, a neural network. And again, everything we think, feel, or do uses a neural network to accomplish our goals. Now, for instance, Love, uh, the, uh, the experience of love is mediated across a neural network. So here's an interesting picture. Notice that top series of brain uh, slides. That's of maternal love, the love of a mother for her child. And notice those bright areas on that slide. Th those indicate areas of the brain that are lit up and active um, in maternal love. The picture below that is of romantic love. Both love, but different sorts of love, aren't they? So different parts of the brain are active. Some of them are the same as in maternal love, but others are different. The point being, again, every thought, every feeling, every action of your life is mediated across a neural circuit. Now, what we've called mental illnesses, it turns out, are simply neural pathways, neural circuits that get stuck. And let's use the example of depression, the experience of depression, to, to make that case. Depression is essentially a stuck brain circuit, a stuck neural circuit. It's kind of like a record player uh, that might have a scratch on it, and the, this beautiful album you can't play because it keeps skipping on the same phrase. The best way to think about this is the area of the brain that we want to wake up uh, for a person who is experiencing depression is called the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. This is the part of the brain that can put things into perspective, that can 
think of different opportunities, that can uh, think a million different sorts of thoughts and not just depressive thoughts, that can marshal up all the resources of the brain to have a full life. So what happens is the tuba player starts to be the conductor and uh, another part of the brain, and the part of the brain that tends to take over when the, when the conductor of the brain is not working well is an area called the anterior cingulate cortex. And that's the part of the brain we see in this slide within the colored section. These uh, areas of the brain, this, this part of the anterior cingulate cortex, isn't good at conducting uh, the brain. It's, but it takes over because the conductor's asleep. The conductor's not doing its job. So here's a picture of the anterior cingulate gyrus. Um, you know, depressed person. It's that glowing area, that orangey yellow area in this slide of a, of a brain. Notice how pretty much the whole brain is dark. It not, it's not working. It's offline. Um, it's, it's asleep, basically, while the anterior cingulate cortex has taken over. So this depressed brain, vast areas of this person's potential aren't being used because the anterior cingulate gyrus is running the show, is conducting the orchestra, and the part of the brain that's supposed to be conducting the brain isn't up to speed. It's overwhelmed. It's exhausted. It's offline. It's kind of like a conductor, a conductor of an orchestra. When we become depressed for any number of reasons, and we'll talk about those in a minute, it's like the brain loses its conductor. It loses its dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. That part of the brain might become overwhelmed or exhausted. And as a result, the orchestra doesn't have a conductor. It's, and here's a picture of a tuba player. Now, he, he can conduct the orchestra, but he can't use his mouth to give instructions. He can't use his hands because he needs those to play the tuba. So you can conduct an orchestra with a tuba, but it's just not a very good way to do it. It gets stuck. Well, there's a number of areas uh, of our life that can cause that to happen. Prolonged stress and grief can just simply overwhelm uh, the conductor of our brain, the, the prefrontal cortex, and uh, we might use up all of the vitamins and minerals and energy sources and substrates that that part of the brain needs to stay online. And as a result, it becomes uh, starved in a way and goes offline. Unresolved trauma can do the same thing. Nutritional deficiencies from uh, what I just mentioned by overuse and, and uh, being overwhelmed or by a bad diet that doesn't uh, provide the things that the brain needs. Metabolic imbalances and medical conditions can do this, uh, as well as the side effect of medications. Deconditioning from lack of exercise is, a, is a often underestimated um, uh, a source of these brain circuits getting stuck toxicities, inflammatory responses, and our interactions with people our, within our family, our social circles, and our spiritual uh, uh, crises can also cause these circuits. So again, the, the goal is to wake up the happy circuits, to wake up the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex. When one comes in, so what we want to do with depression is we want to wake up that happy neural circuit, the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, the area I showed you before, which in this slide is depicted as the large blue area uh, on the left side of this brain. And again, when that part of the brain is overwhelmed and goes offline, the part right underneath it takes over the anterior cingulate cortex. But just like the tuba might take over the orchestra, it just doesn't do a very good job, and we wind up depressed. In other neural circuits, we might wind up anxious. We might wind up with memory difficulties. We might wind up with attention problems, or recurrent nightmares, or recurrent sleep problems, or recurrent problems with post-traumatic stress disorder, etc. All of them have a different neural circuit that is overactive and stuck when that uh, conductor, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, goes offline. So how does this happen? How do these neural circuits in my office? These are the things we focus on. And many of these things you can do at home. And the slides we're, are, we're going to show you in, in the rest of this presentation, but also the videos that are coming, are going to show you how you can do a lot of these things at home. So what we focus on is all of the things that together can overwhelm that dorsolateral prefrontal cortex 
and all the things we can do to support it and support healthy brain function. And this includes a complete metabolic review and a medical assessment, a, a nutritional assessment, um, providing supplements where they might be needed, good therapy, and there's a number of sorts of them that we can talk about and we will talk about in later videos. Exercise, the value of exercise in brain health. Medications, and sometimes they're needed, you know. We don't have to rely on them exclusively, and if we don't need them, we would rather not uh, expose ourselves to side effects, but sometimes they're needed. Then we can have a discussion about social, family, and spiritual alignment to uh, use your brain in the most effective and life-affirming way possible. And the thing that we want to uh, focus on for the rest of this uh, slideshow is neuromodulation. This, friends, is a tremendously exciting uh, new set of developments in brain health that you need to know about. How do we wake up that happy circuit? One of the most exciting ways is using a magnetic pulse that actually nudges the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and wakes it up. It's, uh, here's an example of that. Uh, here's a picture of that. By using a magnetic pulse, you can gently nudge the left prefrontal cortex, wake it up, and it's like waking up the conductor of the orchestra. The tuba can sit back down again, and the conductor can marshal the resources of the whole orchestra. The prefrontal cortex can get the whole brain working again, and you can be happy. This kind of revolutionary, tremendously exciting therapy is called TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation. And uh, uh, let me show you basically what it looks like. That thing that looks like a paddle on the top there, that's a magnetic coil. It sends a magnetic pulse into the uh, top of the head about two centimeters. It's a similar kind of magnet that you have in a, an MRI, for instance. But whereas that magnet goes all the way through your body, this one just goes two centimeters uh, down to stimulate that part of your brain. What is very, very exciting about this is not only that it is tremendously effective, but it has no side effects. Uh, the, there aren't uh, chemical reactions being caused like with medication. So you don't have the side effects that you have with medication. So that you can have a picture like this happen in the same person over a period of just a few weeks, where on the left-hand side, most of their brain is not working really while they're depressed. And after the treatment, you have a brain that's just lit up and on, is working. Very, very exciting. Now, the FDA approved TMS for treatment-resistant depression, and that's for people who've had three or more medication trials, but the medications didn't work, or they didn't work enough, or they might have tried therapy and it didn't work. Now, we know, and I've seen in my own practice, that uh, TMS is tremendously effective in anxiety, attention deficit problems, autism, drug cravings. The FDA is looking at uh, approval for that in drug cravings, but also with PTSD and OCD, uh, just a number of, of issues. And a fascinating thing, I've, I've recently been in contact with researchers who are working for NASA to show how TMS can cause astronauts to work at their peak performance while they're in space. So it, it's not just something that can be used to treat an illness or a, or a, a stuck brain circuit. It can also uh, allow you to have an optimal brain performance for optimal, perf optimal um, uh, you know, work performance, let's say. Very good. So look at these numbers. In, again, in the most difficult cases, people who've had three or more medications not work for them, among those people who've had failures with medications, 54% of them have their symptoms cut in half. And 33% of the most difficult cases have their symptoms completely removed. That's 87% of the people have a response. And these are the most difficult cases. This is absolutely thrilling. So what we'll do in subsequent uh, videos is we'll talk about how we can get your brain unstuck and how you can maximize your brain health. We'll talk about the effects of stress and grief, 
unresolved trauma, nutritional def uh, deficiencies, exercise, metabolic imbalances and medical conditions, toxicities, inflammatory responses, neurofeedback, and TMS. So um, uh, uh, stay tuned for those. Those are on the way. So in the meantime, if you'd like some help, if you're in the Newtown area, uh, give me a call, 475 225 5098, and I'd be happy to do what I can to help you. Okay, uh, all my best to you for health and happiness. Just like when we're depressed, we might have the same set of negative thoughts over and over again, the same negative, hopeless emotions over and over again, or a CD player, which makes that annoying uh, sound when, when the CD skips. Just as a record or a CD can skip uh, and miss out on the whole album and just keep playing that same annoying uh, piece of music over and over, in a similar way, the brain can get stuck in a neural circuit. 